Hey everybody, Mike Cipperini here of Chipper's Island Adventures, and today I'm going to go over the Swagman E-Spec Bike Rack. So these are my electric e-bikes. XP 2.0 step through versions, one black and one white. Because I'm transporting with my RV, I needed a good bike rack. So what I got was this, the Swagman E-Spec bike rack. And this is specifically built for RVs. Now, this is the upright that holds the bikes in place. And as you can see, these are for three inch tires or up to three inch tires and I'm gonna go over all that in a minute what makes this RV rated is the following first off if you want to take this bike rack and fold it you could take this pin out and then fold the bike rack right up like so if you have an RV or if you have this on your RV hitch then this needs to be stabilized. So what happens is you take that pin, you put it in the storage area, which is right here. Go ahead and lock that down. And then you take this bolt and you put it through. and then tighten it down and this way here it is RV rated so you just lock it down because they want this sucker to be locked down when you're riding down the road so it's not bouncing around so this way here with that bolt on it no longer can fold and it is locked down. Now I'd like to go over a couple of specs on this bike rack. It weighs 64 pounds and it fits, it fits in a normal two inch hitch. So you need a two inch wide hitch in order to mount this on your RV or your SUV wherever it may go. It'll hold two e-bikes up to 70 pounds per bike. Now the electric e-bikes the step through version and the cruiser version which has the bar going across those weigh approximately 64 pounds that's as they come if you start adding racks to the rear or the front of course the weight's going to go up a little bit more myself I added a milk crate on one end what I tend to do is when I load my e-bikes, I go ahead and fold the handlebars down. I put the seats all the way down. The biggest concern you have when you do load the e-bike is this mount or rack system, whatever you want to call it, that actually holds the e-bikes tight to the rack. Well, you got to make sure your pedals are adjusted and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this apart, put it in the rack crate, now I am ready to load the e-bikes. One thing about this, I'm fairly strong, so even though 64 pounds isn't a lot of weight, which is what these e-bikes weigh but they're awkward they're awkward to lift so getting your first e-bike way in here can be a little bit trying and you're going to see what I mean here in a moment now by the way one thing I did want to say I'm slanting this toward the electric e-bike because that's what I have but this bike rack like I said will fit up the tires three inches wide it is rated up to 70 pounds per bike so you can figure it out if you have a different e-bike but I'm going with the electric version 
And by the way, if you're wondering what the weights are of the newer versions, they have the light, which is 46 pounds, and they have the, uh, geez, I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's 70 pounds. So it's 46, 64 for the step through and the cruiser at the XP 2.0, and then I believe it's the premium, and that one there is 70 pounds. So I'm going to lift this bike up and put it into the far rack so you can see how it goes here. And there it is. So that bike is sitting in the wheel wells pretty well. Then what you're going to do, coming close. Like I said, you want you got to make sure the pedals are out of the way when you lift this thing up. And if you watch, as you can see, it's going to hit. So I got to make sure I get out of the way. And there's one way. As I said, that's probably the most awkward thing you have to do on this. Now I can take this and bring it down, and I should be fine. Now the other thing I like to do is I like to lower these handlebars, because that way there it's not bouncing off my rig, the back of my rig. Then all you have to do is make sure your tires are lined up to get the these um, rubber strips through and you have to adjust them a little bit so this this um, molded piece of plastic fits firmly on your rim and then it can just ratchet it down and then it can come back and do the same with the the back one Now I will tell you that sometimes I have to adjust the tire a little bit and give it a little bit of spin to get it sitting right. But right now that's not looking too bad. Now I'm going to take the second bike and put it on. go second bike is in and that's not too bad and as you can see this is not in the way of the the um, whatever that's called actually I'm gonna move it a little bit and spin it back because I still have to get the, the uh, I still have to get these things on to bring them down. Once again, I'm going to fold over these handlebars. So we're looking pretty good right there. Now I got to go ahead, put the straps through. As you can see, this one could use a little adjustment. That's perfect right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the, the rear strap on. And that's locked down pretty good. So the bikes are on, they're not looking too bad. But the thing I have to do 
is I have to lock these things down with these. Now the problem is, when you put this on, as you can see, it has to come way down here. So what I did, what I did is I went out and I bought two of these Swagman crossbars. And all you have to do is you press the button, put it under the, put it under the handlebar, and then one under the seat. And now you have a crossbar. Now you have a crossbar that'll hold it in a lot better instead of going way down. So this crossbar can be purchased through Swagman or it can be purchased through another company. I just happen to have the Swagman variety. Now, with the crossbars on, and these, I don't, I'm not sure what they're called, mounting hooks or whatever, with both of those on, these e-bikes are locked in place pretty well. What I like to do after I do that, is go around, make sure they're ratcheted down pretty good. looking pretty good and that's all you need by the way I do want to add that these these things have little locks on them so you can lock each of them to the bike rack which makes it very nice when you're traveling now in case you're wondering if I cover it I do I cover it when I'm traveling what I have is a Team Obsidian bike cover that I got on Amazon. I'll provide the link for that. And that covers two bikes perfectly. Now if you're wondering why I put the seats down and why I put the handlebars down, for the most part it's to see the logo. But it's so easy to fold these handlebars down and put the seats down and put them back up. It's not an issue for me. It makes it a little more compact. You got a nice squared off area. But once I put this bike cover on, it has bungees to tighten down a little bit and straps. But I use these nice too long bungees to wrap around the bikes. And that holds this thing really, really tight. It's perfect. What's the con on this bike rack? Well, you just saw me putting these bad boys up. For me, they're awkward enough. For someone that it's even more trying to get them up, it's gonna be a real challenge to get these bike racks on the bike. What would be ideal is to have a ramp that came off. What, and that way they could roll the bikes right up. I called Swagman the other day and they told me that by the end of June, early July, they will be um, selling a Swagman bike ramp specifically made for this bike rack. So that is in the cards, it's coming, and I can't wait to uh, see it because I, I really would like to use it. It'll be a lot easier to roll a bike up than to have to hoist it up there. So I guess that's about it. Later on, once I get that bike ramp, I'll go ahead and uh, do a little video on it. But for now, that's about it on this bike rack. Don't forget, it's rated for 70 pounds per bike. 
two bikes and it's RV rated. It goes for somewhere around $450. You can see it here in this link here. It's very difficult to get. Some places are sold out of them. I happen to get lucky and purchase it from a local bike shop. And when I purchased it, they had already assembled it. All I had to do was take it and pop it into the hitch and lock it down because the bike, uh, the bike shop had already assembled it. So some of you may ask, well, why don't you make it so it sits lower so it's easier to lift up? Well, where I park my rig near my house, I have a wall that's right near, right in back of my rig. And the wall goes right under the bike rack. So it's a tight spot front to rear. So for me, it works out to keep it this height, just so I clear the wall. And that's what it looks like all packaged up with the Team Obsidian two bike bike cover. Pretty tight doesn't get wet so that's it for my swagman bike rack if you like this video feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and as I always say all the best to all and happy RVing hey everybody Mike Chipperini here from Chippers Island Adventures and today I'm going to go over my East oh, it's hard hey. hold on don't, don't laugh Time's ticking. 